What's boundary setting got to do with making an impact, I hear you ask? Well, as a leader, having clear and consistent boundaries is all part of how you manage yourself and others. And in this episode, I'm going to break down how to set and stick to your boundaries in a way that will have you making the right impact in the workplace. Hi, I'm Lee, and this channel is for you if you're a CEO or a senior leader wanting to maximise your impact to achieve organisational success. Yes, we are talking all things around building authority and influence through great communication and connection. Plus, those wider leadership skills that will help you stand out from the crowd. So, hit the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on any of these videos. Right, let's start with some housekeeping. Setting boundaries doesn't mean you're being difficult or demanding. The words people can throw around when you assert your boundaries are usually from a place of discomfort on their part. It's a projection, not a fact. Boundary setting is a sign of a healthy relationship with yourself and with others. And for all those people pleasers out there, you'll probably get more respect if you put boundaries in place. So what exactly is a boundary and how do you start to get them? Put simply, a boundary is the standard you set. You expect even. It's your definition of what's okay and what's not. It's those markers or red lines that you draw and make it clear to others where you stand. And because your boundaries are unique to you, there's no set rule book or process to follow. I'm not going to sit here, tell you what boundaries to put in place. You have to go on your own exploration around what feels right for you at this moment in time. And that's key because our boundaries, like everything in life, can change. And that's okay. That's not you being flaky or being walked over or being more particular. As long as you have awareness and you know where and why you draw the lines that you do. As a leader, the boundaries you set in the workplace say a lot. You can set the tone, the culture of an organisation. You are literally creating expectations. They manifest themselves in so many ways. The vision and focus of an organisation, its values and behaviours, the culture, management and working style, the connectiveness of the people. And that's why it's important that you're mindful of what your boundaries say and do. Think about it. If you get into an office super early, leave late at night, always on the emails over the weekend, what's the precedent and expectation that you're setting? The likelihood is you're creating or perpetuating an overworked culture. People will feel guilty for sticking to their normal hours. It creates a ripple effect. Or what about your health and well-being? If you don't take a lunch break or any break, if you run from meeting to meeting back to back without the time to collect your thoughts or take a breather, what's that saying to your team? It's all well and good saying you don't expect that of others, but actions speak louder than words. And you'll lose your integrity and trust if your behaviours are at odds with what you say is important to you. The bottom line is that your boundaries are what will help make you a more effective and impactful leader. And more than that, how you demonstrate your respect and value of other people's boundaries is just as important. So if you want to start working on your boundaries, here are three areas you can focus on today. Number one, how you use your time. This can cover everything from how you manage your meetings, how you create time to think and work on strategy and planning, what hours you choose to work and how you'll structure your day. What rules you put in place for people who manage your diary. It could even be how long you spend scrolling versus engaging on social media. Number two, how you work. It's not just how you use your time, but also what you choose to do with it. Not getting pulled down into the weeds by your teams. Knowing what type of work-life balance you're looking for. It might be taking time for the kids to go to school or fitting in an exercise class. You might find you're more creative in the morning and you need to protect that time to allow you to focus on the right things. It might be what standards you want to set about your visibility in the organisation. How much you get out to network and build relationships. Who you choose to build those relationships with. Number three is how you manage. I'm not going to get into a long discussion about assurance, reassurance, accountability, responsibility. You'll know what your governance requirements are for your organisation. But be sure that you're not getting them mixed up. I find when leaders do, they're often creating a vacuum of information that can feel like micromanaging for the teams involved. However, be clear on what you need to know when you want people to get you involved. And to that end, defining what's information sharing versus input versus decision making can really make a difference. And how you manage is also about the behaviours you display and tolerate of others. If you're wondering how to get started, identify those boundaries that are most important to you. It might be by designing your ideal day or week, or it might be by noting the areas that really make you mad, those unstated boundaries that are causing you problems. 
Once you've clarified a boundary, start thinking through how it will work in practice. What might you need to change? What processes might you or others have to put in place? Consistency is key. It's like a habit that needs time to take hold. Remember, if you're changing your stance or your approach to something, how can you expect others to respect your boundary? You're not always going to get it right and that's okay. The key is that you listen and learn along the way. Oh, and no isn't a dirty word and you shouldn't feel guilty for using it. So there you go. How to set and stick to your boundaries as a leader. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button and comment below with the boundaries you're going to start working on. If you want to know more about the six steps to impact framework and how a 100 day plan can help you maximise your impact in a new job, then head over to my website with the links in the notes below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you can be the first to know when the next video arrives. Until then, take care.